Hey everyone, Victor is here and in this video I want to talk about this fun synthesis. So we are starting with an ester and after several steps we are going to end up with this substituted ketone over here. So if you want to work through this synthesis before you see the answer, pause this video because I am going to start with my preliminary analysis right now. So since we are starting with a carbonyl compound in this case and we are going to be making a couple of new bonds, we have a new bond over over here and the new bond over here, most likely what we are going to be looking at is either going to be the alkylation of the enolates or potentially some sort of the malonic or acetoacetic ester, which is another version of the alkylation of enolates, but with a twist. Personally, I prefer to go with the malonic or acetoacetic ester synthesis every time because of two main reasons. First of all, I don't have to use harsh conditions like uh, strong bases like LDA or sodium hydride or anything of that sort, and second, which is even more important, we are always going to get 100% regioselectivity with those reactions, which is extremely important for any synthetic purposes. But you might protest here that our starting material is just ethyl acetate, it's not malonic or acetoacetic ester. Well, yes, that is correct. However, if I take my starting material and subject it to a simple Claisen condensation with itself, what I'm going to end up up with is precisely acetoacetic ester. So while I might not have that as a starting material, it is a very simple one-step process to make it. Now from this point I can see that this part of the molecule maps onto this part of my uh, final product, which means that what I would have to do here is to add the ethyl group and the allele group to my molecule and then do my decarboxylation reaction. The exact order in which I'm going to add my groups here is not particularly relevant, so I'm going to start with the ethyl group first. So in order to add that one, I'm going to analyze my acetoacetic ester and I'm going to treat it with the ethyl bromide to get my product with the ethyl group on it. Now, in order to add the allyl group on, I'm going to do the same trick. I'm going to analyze my molecule first and then I'm going to add the allyl bromide to do the substitution and get the following product where I have added both of my groups to my molecule. So I have my ethyl group right over here, so this is my ethyl group, and I have my allyl group over here, so I will just call it as an allyl group like that. Now, the only thing that is left for me is to get rid of this ester group from this part of the molecule, and we can easily do it via the decarboxylation reaction. So to get my final product, I am first going to hydrolyze my ester here in basic conditions, neutralize it to give me a beta ketocarboxylic acid, and finally warm it up a little bit to do the decarboxylation and get my final product. Pretty easy. Now, this synthesis is pretty efficient and very easy from the perspective of both regioselectivity and also from the perspective of, well, how much it costs. All the reagents that we are using in the synthesis are fairly cheap and commercially available. However, if the budget was not an issue and we had unlimited amount of money for this synthesis, this synthesis can be accomplished in just two synthetic steps. Can you think of what would be the steps here? If you can, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, boop that like button and subscribe for more. Check out this video next and I will see you next time.